Okay guys, it's time to show off a little bit more of uh, what I've done software-wise with my NABU over here. Uh, we are up to monitor version 0.4.3. It's still pretty raw and uh, barely functional, but uh, you know what? I think I've made a lot of progress. You know, my goal is to make the NABU into a standalone computer, all right? You just turn it on, you got BASIC, you can sit there, you can type out programs, and go, all right? Just like a lot of the computers back in the day, you know, the TRS-80, the Apple II, the Commodore 64, whatever, you got it out of the box, you plugged it into the wall, you plugged it into your TV, and you were ready to compute. You didn't need anything else, okay? You could buy a lot of extra bells and whistles, but you didn't need them. All right? So that's been my goal with the NABU. Problem is, you know, when I pulled the EEPROM out of the NABU, it's basically inert. You can't do anything with it. So before I can put a basic interpreter on this thing, I've had to write a terminal program for it so that um, it can interpret stuff coming from the keyboard and display it on the screen. It can interpret stuff coming from the basic interpreter and display it on the screen, that sort of thing. So this is what I've been working on. And I think I've got to the point where I've got a basic terminal program that actually functions, okay? Um, I can put stuff on the screen easy enough. You know, um, if I hit the reset button here, and it pops up with Mike's NABU monitor version 3.403. Let me uh, let me zoom in on that for you so you can see what's happening over here on the screen. Okay, and then it's gonna you know I've got it said it skips a couple lines and you can type you can say whatever you want to say down here. Okay, now I have carriage return line feed which I didn't have before. If I push, well they call it go here, but it's definitely got the little carriage return line feed symbol on the key. And if I press that, well, we start typing at the far left of the next line. And I press it a few times, we start typing way down here. Okay, if I press it a few more times, we start typing way down here. And then we're down here. And what happens if we fill the bottom of the screen in? Look at that, we've got scrolling. It scrolls up one line and you can keep typing. Look at that. Scrolling is hard. Scrolling is hard. Let me tell you, writing a whole um, terminal program, I would rather write an entire monitor for a computer that interacts with an existing terminal than write a terminal program. Terminal programs are hard, okay? Scrolling is hard. Uh, keeping track of your cursor position is hard. Um, to avoid having to do 16-bit arithmetic because there's 960 positions on the screen. You know, you can't you can't do that with 8-bit arithmetic. You know, keep track of where you are. Uh, so I, I've just got a, a table of all 24 character starting positions on each row over here. And um, then I just add to it, you know, how far out I go to the right. So it's... <laughs> Whew, it's been a it's been a bit of a bear to figure out and get it working. I don't have a cursor, a visible cursor yet. I've started working on that, but I don't know if I want to bother with it. It's a lot of overhead to uh, make the cursor visible and then type over it and then make it visible in the next spot and then type over it and keep track of its position and move it to where you want it. We'll see. I think I've got this to the point where it works good enough that I could um, burn the monitor that I have for, well, I'll have to modify it. I'll have to modify it. But I have, I wrote a monitor for the Teletech System Master. I'll put a link in the upper right to the playlist for the Teletech System Master uh, retro computing series. I think I'm up to 12 videos on that. Um, but I wrote a, a pretty complete monitor for that, and I'll just have to uh, modify it to work with the NABU here, and I think it will, and I'll, I'll eventually be using that monitor on my Jazz 80 um, breadboard computer too, which I'll put a link to that series up here. I've been seriously neglecting the Jazz 80 while I play with my shiny new thing, the NABU here. But um, some of what I'm creating here can 
you know, be transferred over to the Jazz 82, I'm sure. So, um, it's working. Oh yeah, and before I forget, there's one other feature I'll show off to you. A lot of you younger folks may not understand the importance of this, or its historical importance anyway. But if you do Control G on an older computer, you get a beep or a bell sound. That's from back when you interacted with computers through teletypes and there would be a ding to let you know when the message was coming in or when it was complete. So, yeah, so I wrote a, a little program since I, back in episode two, I got the sound generator, figured out how to get sound out of the sound generator. I, uh, I wrote a little, a little routine to make a beep when you get a control G coming in. So just for compatibility with a lot of older software, which we're going to be running old software on this thing. So, you know, might as well be compatible. Uh, we're up to version 0.4.3, so when I get a chance, I will put this up on my blog at, uh, and i got to type this right, because what I don't have yet is Backspace. I need to work on that. Of course, Backspace will help with the cursor, because then I can back up and overwrite the cursor every time a new character comes out. So, maybe I will have a visible cursor on this. So there's where you need to go to download this version of the firmware if you want it. Uh, this video will probably come out on New Year's Day. I don't know if I will have this version of the firmware on my blog yet on New Year's Day, but check back in a day or two. It ought to be there. All right, and I'll keep working on it. Now that I realize I still need to put, you know, a... Uh, some sort of backspace on this. Get the delete key working. Um, yeah. So there's there's more work to do. Plus, I want to integrate the monitor I wrote for um, the Teletech System Master. So there will be new versions of this. Um, now again, I'm working on this stuff in my spare time. I get a lot of requests from people for this or that or particular aid or they want to talk to me or whatever. Uh, they want me to help them do something in particular with their NABU. I'm really busy. Uh, sorry if I don't get back to you, but I just got too many different projects going on. And uh, I got honeydews from the wife. Got family. It's the holidays. Um, and uh, yeah, sorry. Um, I'm going to be really busy for the next couple of weeks too. Got some other projects I need to work on. So some development on the NABU may slow down a little bit. So uh but eventually, I want to have this as a standalone computer, turn it on, got basic, ready to go, and uh, I will share this, the, the software firmware with you when it's done, okay, for your own hacking pleasure. All right, well, if you found this video at all interesting, educational, informative, inspirational, whatever, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see my future videos. Um, check out my main channel, Omega Geek 64 There's interesting stuff going on over there all the time. And I will see you in the next Nabo Hacking video or the next Jazz 80 video, whichever comes out first. Thanks for watching this video. Bye.